Hello, FCF family. Pastor Bill here with our April blog. And uh, as always, it's good to come and to speak with you and share the Word of God. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, remind you of our upcoming relational gatherings because we're very excited about, about all of these meetings. The first one, the next one on the agenda isn't very far away, April the 15th and 16th in Ajax, Ontario with Pastor Frederica and Barry Walters and their congregation. The format of the meeting is 7 o'clock on Friday evening, uh, meet and greet on Saturday morning at 9.30 and then we go right into our sessions and we go right through until noontime and then we'll break and have lunch together uh, at a place that will be announced at the time and then uh, we'll dismiss from there and uh, we'll be staying with the church for Sunday morning service as well, Dusk and I. And then our next uh, relational gathering will be the Maritime Relational Gathering in Moncton, New Brunswick with host pastor Sean Annis and the congregation, May the 13th and 14th. And then our Western Regional Relational Gathering will be in Edmonton with uh, Arlene and David Kinzel, May the 27th and the 28th. And then we'll be staying for the Sunday service as well and all of these following the format that we just went over. And then Newfoundland, we have co confirmed the dates for the Newfoundland uh, relational gathering. It will be in Clarenville with Pastor Dave Bowering in the congregation, October the 28th and 29th, a Friday night, Saturday through till noon, and then I'll be staying to minister at the church in Clarenville on the 30th. We look forward to seeing you there. Ontario folk, you're first on the list, and so we're expecting to see a great turnout in Ajax on April the 15th and 16th. God bless you as you gather there. Bring your families and bring your bring your church people, bring other ministers. Uh, don't just make it for yourself. In, in, include others uh, in our relational gathering. That's what it's about, relationships, relationships. Before I leave you today, I'd just like to leave you with a, with a, with a word from God. And uh, likely you think that I'm stuck on this verse. I am, but the Holy Spirit has got me stuck in a good place. And that's in John, the 14th chapter. And I've talked to you about the 20th verse a lot. At that day you will know. And I'm, I'm believing God that every one of us will come to the place that we really know what Jesus said, that he is in the Father, that you are in Jesus. And Jesus is in you, a union made by God. Un, in, it's inseparable. There is nothing that can change it. We're not living for the Lord, but the life we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God. We're not, we're not here trying to be a Christian. We are people in whom the life of Christ has dwells and has come in union. We are one with him. We are one with him. And I'm so so that has so empowered my thinking. Then in the 21st verse is where I want to take you today. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Okay. And he who loves me, are you the he who loves him? You love Jesus? Of course you love Jesus. But I want you to notice something about it. If you love him, you love Jesus. There is something that you have. And he said, you will be loved by my Father. Can you comprehend what it means to be loved by Jesus' Father? To be loved by God himself. And here's what Jesus said, you'll be loved of my Father. But he didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. Just as we are one in him and in the Father, he said, when you receive this love of the Father, there's another dimension of love that you receive. And he said, I will love him, and that him is you, that him is me that him is your people. He said, and I will love him, but notice this word, oh my, my, what this word means, I will manifest myself to him. Every one of us, and rightly so, are wanting to see greater things in our churches. We're wanting to see greater things in our nation. We're wanting to see signs, miracles, and wonders. We all talk about that. We're wanting to have what we refer to as the supernatural, which really is the manifest life of Christ. It's, it, it's, it's, it's very natural. It's the, it's the manifest life of Christ. But he said, he, he said, I will love him. And here's what he promised to those that he loves. He said, I, I, I will love him and I will 
manifest myself to him. I will manifest myself to him. That word manifest means to cause to shine. He said, if you, I will love you and I will cause myself to shine in your midst. I will to appear, to come into view. I'm reading, I'm reading what Strong says, to come into view, reveal, I'll exhibit. Now, when you focus on Jesus and understand you are loved by him, that he is going to shine forth in you, he's going to appear in you, in our midst, and he's going to reveal and exhibit and make visible. He's, it means to present oneself to the sight of another. You imagine, when we understand that because he loves us, he is going to present himself in our sight. What does it look like when Jesus presents himself visibly? in our midst. He said he will become conspicuous. Conspicuous. You understand conspicuous. You ever feel conspicuous? You felt like every eye was fastened on you because you were conspicuous. Jesus said, I'll come into your midst if you love me. He said, I, when you understand I love you, I will become conspicuous in your midst. In other words, every eye will be aware of me. Every person will see me. Every person will become consumed with the fact that I am there, I am conspicuous. What happens when Jesus becomes conspicuous? You have the Savior, the Holy Ghost baptizer, the healer, the mighty God in Christ in your midst, and all that he has and all that he is being made known and being made manifest. I speak over your life. God bless you as you understand you're loved of Jesus, and he is making himself manifest in your midst. God bless you.